Hey everyone, Andrew Carruthers here, Education Director for Samvia. We want to share a little technique with you about how to work with necklines. Because as you can see, our beautiful model Madison here, we just cut a really nice classic shape on her. And this is a shape that you see a lot in the salon. It's always been in style, it always will be in style. It's just something that's classic and modern all at the same time. Now the challenge that we run into a lot of times with this shape is what happens in the back. And I gotta tell you a little secret. This was really hard not to cut all this off and let her walk around after prep. <laughs> so as we turn her around, this is a lot of times what you have left over after you cut these little short graduated shapes, right? So we're gonna talk about how do you work with this hairline. There's lots of different things that come into play here because we, also, we, we have to find out what our clients' needs and wants are. Do they want something heavily textured? Do they want something more solid, uh, classic, you know, more modern? We have to find all those elements out. The other element is we need to work with what's naturally happening. And you can see Madison has a lot of growth, you know, down here lower on the neckline, which can be kind of challenging at times. So she was an excellent model to show these te techniques with. So we're going to start out by addressing the perimeter. And to do that, I'm actually going to use the Samvia razor with our straight blade in it. And the reason for that is I want to come in and what I want to do is I want to just kind of start to take away some of this, this length in the neck. Now, I'm just kind of gently coming across this and just kind of peeling the hair away as I work. And what I'm doing is I'm just trying to kind of take away enough hair that I start to get into the area where I have more density and I have a little bit more control over my shape. Now, it doesn't necessarily always have to be that way because there have been times where it was popular to actually leave a lot of length around this neck. So one of the benefits of the razor is as we're removing that overall length, we're also removing the superfluous hair that's on, that, on the neck. Now this little guy that's winging out right there, I'm just gonna actually grab, because her chin kind of starts there and I don't wanna rake my razor against her chin, or sorry, her jaw. Now a lot of us have been taught that you should not use a razor on dry hair. The reason for that is yes, it can actually rough up the cuticle a little bit. I actually prepped the hair with shine flash first, which helps to give the hair some slip, almost as if I was working with wet hair, and that helps. The other benefit to her hair is that it is fairly, fairly healthy, so I'm not as worried about roughing up that cuticle layer. So again, just removing that excess length and the superfluous hair with the razor with the straight blade. Now for some of your clients, this actually might be enough. And, and this might be the end. Because again, it's, a lot of it is based off of the client's needs and wants, and how much texture, how much softness they actually want. And that doesn't hurt at all, right? The nice thing is that guard around the blade keeps the blade from really hitting the skin completely, so it keeps it pretty soft on the skin, and you can do these types of techniques right on the, on the neck. Now, you can see, again, that could be where we wanted to stop. However, I wanna do some more detailing. To continue the detailing, I'm gonna to switch to our Samvia Invisiblend shear. The reason I really enjoy this shear is this blade is actually not a cutting blade. You can see I can rub my finger across it. And these teeth are sharp. So what that does is it presses the hair against the blade and as it cuts, it actually allows the hair to slip forward. Usually we're not looking for hair to push out of our shears, but this blade is designed to do exactly that. Because what that does then, instead of creating a flat notch, like the regular tooth of a blending shear would do, what this does is since it's pushing forward as it cuts, it actually creates this shape with each notch. So it's invisible to the naked eye to see where those blend points are. It's an incredible shear. It takes very, very small amounts of hair away at a time. 
So I'm just gonna kind of tilt her head to the side here, and I'm gonna come in and start addressing some of these areas that have just a little extra density along the hairline. And just really softly peeling that hair away. And as I keep working, what I'm looking for, again, is just those areas of density and balancing those areas of density with the perimeter. And I like that movement that it starts to get in the looseness. So we're just going to keep turning her and finding those areas of density and using that invisible end shear to lighten those areas up. Now there's also the option of actually taking this neckline up. Now on Madison, I think it would create a problem because she does have a lower neckline. So as this grows in, that's what I'm really thinking about could be the challenge. If I take this too high into her neckline, within a week or two, she's gonna have a lot of stubble down there that's gonna make the, the neckline look dirty anyway. So taking it too high is not gonna be beneficial either. And then the last technique that I want to show you is actually how to get, keep your little bit of length here and then collapse this weight that's just above it more. I'm going to take the wide teeth of the short, cut, short cutting comb in a contrasting color. I've got ivory so that it works along with her dark hair. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that perimeter and I'm going to elevate it and then lift a little bit. I'm going to come in with the invisible end and I'm gonna cut and take some weight out. Now what that does is since I'm stretching that perimeter up to that cutting point, it leaves the length of the perimeter and it actually creates almost a scoop right in there where I lifted it and, and cut the hair out because it's creating a stationary guide in there. So that helps to scoop out that weight and collapse more right above the line there. And you can see the difference between that area that we've done it on and this side where that bulk still lives. So those are three techniques that we love for refining these necklines. And it's kind of interesting because whenever I teach this haircut, before I can even get to it, people are like, well, what are you gonna do with all the hair down here? And that is such a common challenge. So we thought it was something very important to share with you today. So we hope you learned a lot, and if you have any questions, comments, go ahead and add them to the box just below the video screen. We'll do our best to get right back to you. My name is Andrew Carruthers, and I'm the Education Director for Sanvia.